Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we are trying to show that this new random variable which I've defined, yj, where j is a variable, j can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it can be any num natural number basically. So you can ask when, uh, what's the time at which the first email arrives, we've already got a variable which does that, which is w1. Um, we can ask what time does the second email arrive, third email, fourth email, etc. Uh, so yj is going to map each outcome onto the time at which the jth email arrives basically. Okay, uh, so now what we're going to do is um, we're going to see how yj is basically the sum of a bunch of random variables we've already looked at. So remember these w random variables we had? So we had w1, uh, I think they were super scripted, we had w2, we had wi, remember? And what were these random variables doing again? They were mapping you onto the positive real number, 0 to infinity, this one was also mapping you onto 0 to infinity, and the final one was also mapping onto 0 to infinity. Okay, so what were they doing? They were mapping each outcome onto the time between the i minus 1th email and the i-th email, basically. So wi, the general w function, mapped an outcome onto the amount of time, amount of time, time, between, uh, between alpha and uh, I minus 1, uh, sorry, no, that's the tie, uh, between the I minus 1th email, email, and the I female. That's what it was doing. It was mapping you on to the amount of time between the I minus 1th email and the I email. So if we call alpha I minus 1 the time at which the I minus 1 email arrives, so let's say I alpha I minus 1 is here, and we call alpha I the time at which the I female arrives, then it maps you onto alpha I minus alpha I minus 1, basically. In fact, what it does, in, since we've got these Y variables now, we might as well write it in terms of Y. What it in fact wraps you onto is it maps you onto to yi minus yi minus 1, because yi is the time at which the if email arrives, and yi minus 1 is mapping each outcome onto the time at which the i minus 1th email arrives. Now that instantly tells us that there is a connection between the wi's and the yj's, basically, and the yi's, if you like, uh, because the subscript doesn't matter, it's a dummy variable, effectively. Okay, uh, so the connection is quite clear, hopefully, that yi, the time at which the ith email arrives, is going to be, well, it's going to be wi, the time between the ith email and the i minus 1 email, then it's going to be plus wi minus 1, which is the time between uh, the i mi minus 1 email and then the i minus 2 email, so that's going to go back a further one, and then basically you continue on all the way down to plusing w1. So basically, w1 is going to give you the time between 0 and the first email, w2 is then going to give you the time between the first email and the second email, and you keep going on and adding all the way up to wi, and you're going to add up all of those inter-arrival times all the way up to the uh, I if email, and that's going to give you the time at which the if email arrives. So basically, this random variable, yi, is the sum, it's equal to the sum from, uh, let's say, r is equal to 1 to i of wr, basically. It's going to add up those random var uh, the, these random variables, w's, but these w random variables, basically. And we'll remember that wr is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda, uh, which is what we uh, saw in the previous video. Okay, so we are summing up, basically, a bunch of independent and identically distributed random variables. So they are all identically distributed. Independent is something we haven't discussed so far. The reason they are independent is, should the amount of time between the... Um, uh, between 0 and the first email, the amount of time you have to wait for the first email, should that affect the amount of time you have to wait for the second email? We never, we didn't assume, uh, we, well, it shouldn't really, should it? Because the problem's begun again, as far, uh, because of the memoryless property, the um, independence follows from that, that, you know, it should not affect how long you have to then wait. It's as though the problem has begun again. It doesn't matter what's happened previously. Okay, so the memoryless property basically uh, tells us independence. Okay, so these are uh, independent and identically distributed random variables. Okay, so we could try doing some uh, working out directly what the probability density function is going to be for this, but there's a better way basically. 
Instead of handling probability density functions, we're instead going to handle uh, moment generating functions because moment generating functions behave very nicely with, with regards to addition. So let's instead try and work out the expected value of e to the I won't use t again, e to the u, we're using u now as our uh, random variable for, um, we're, 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 using u as our, uh, we're using u as our variable for the moment generating function. So e to the u, y, i, basically. Okay, and this is going to be the moment generating function of y, i as a function of u. So that's what I mean, that's what u is going to be. It's going to be this, um, this uh, variable in the moment generating function. Okay, so now what we can just do is replace yi with this sum of, um, of uh, i independent and identically distributed exponentials. So it's going to become the expected value of e to the u, and then we substitute them in, w1 plus w2, oh dear, I've subscripted them rather than superscripted them, so never mind, plus all the way along to uh, wi basically now. Okay, and then what we can do is split that up. Uh, so firstly, distribute, multiply out the u uh, by distributivity, and then split up the exponential. So this becomes the expected value of e to the u w1 uh, times e to the u w2 times all the way up to e to the u wi. And then, basically, because all the w's are independent, this splits up into the expected value of e to the u w1. So we've discussed how if two random variables are independent and you're taking the expected value of their product, uh, then uh, it's just the expected value of each of them multiplied together. Uh, and basically, because w1, w2, up to wi are all independent, then if you take the exponential of them, that shouldn't affect. If if uh, what if the value of w1 doesn't determine at all, uh, affect at all the value of w2, why should the exponential of uh, the value w1 times u affect the exponential of the value u, w2? Right, so this becomes the expected value of u w1, the expected value of e to the u w2, all the way down to times the expected value of e to the power of u w i. Okay, so basically we are taking the moment generating function of an exponential distribution and we're timesing it together, uh, uh, well we're timesing it together i times basically. So this is going to be, uh, all of these moment generating functions are going to be identical because they're all identically distributed, so their moment generating function should be the same. So what we need to do is work out the moment generating function for an exponential distribution and raise it to the power of i, basically. So it's the expected value of one of these, so we'll just say e to the u w1, so the moment generating function of the random variable w1, to the power of i. Okay, so let's work out the moment generating function for an exponential distribution. Okay, so um, if we have w1, which is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda, then what that means, uh, we've seen is that the, prob the CDF, the probability that w1 is less than or equal to little w, we've seen that that's going to be 1 minus e to the negative lambda w. So that means that the PDF is going to equal the derivative of that, so the PDF, so f of this random variable w1 as a function of little w, the PDF of this random variable w1 as a function of little w is going to be the derivative of this, if you differentiate 1 that remains, that goes to 0 rather, and if you differentiate this you'll get negative e to the negative lambda w times the derivative of the thing inside which is negative lambda, and that just becomes lambda e to the negative lambda w basically. Okay, right, uh, so uh, there's the PDF now. Now from the PDF we can calculate the moment generating function. So if we want the moment generating function of W1 as a function of U, it's going to be the expected value of E to the uh, U uh, W1, okay? And by Lotus, that's the integral from what well, would be negative infinity to infinity, but of course we know the PDF is just going to be zero on the non-positive real numbers, so we can just integrate from zero to infinity. Uh, e to the u uh, little w times the PDF on the positive real numbers, lambda e to the negative uh, lambda w uh, dw. Okay, so more paper. Right, so we're doing that integral. So the integral we've got at the moment, the moment generating function of w1 uh, as a function of little w is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, oh, not as a function of little w, as a function of little u, is equal to e to the uw uh, 
and then it was the PDF on the positive uh, real numbers, lambda e to the negative lambda w dw. Okay, so the lambda comes out, and we get lambda, the integral from 0 to infinity, of e to the negative lambda minus u w dw. So I've just combined the two exponentials there. And obviously, this integral is only going to be finite if lambda minus u is greater than 0, because we need it to be a negative exponential. If, it's go if, this, if this is less than 0, then it will multiply with this negative to make a positive number. So it will then, will then be integrating a positive exponential on the positive real numbers, and you won't get a finite value. You will get quite the opposite. So we need lambda minus u to be greater than 0, which tells us that u is going to be, uh, has to be uh, less than lambda. So the moment generating function is only going to be defined on a subset of the real line, which is, here is lambda, uh, and you it will only be defined, basically, on this interval here. So, and it'll be defined on uh, values less than, um, less than uh, lambda. And remember, lambda is always greater than zero for an um, exponential distribution, otherwise the PDF doesn't integrate to one. Okay, uh, so we're on our way. Uh, so we now want to uh, we now want to integrate this, which is easy to do because uh, because lambda minus u is as far as as far as the integral is concerned, lambda minus u is just a constant. So uh, we just need to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, the anti and say that this is going to be the antiderivative of this, which is uh, the exponential e to the negative lambda minus u w divided by that power, which is negative lambda minus u, because if we differentiate this, it's going to go to that, because when you differentiate this, uh, what will happen is the exponential will remain exactly the same, and you'll just multiply by this constant out the front, so that'll cancel with the constant that we've divided through by now. So you'll get, and then evaluate that between 0 and infinity. Okay, when you evaluate this at infinity, it's obviously just going to converge on being zero, basically. So then what you'll get is, uh, so you get something that's converging on zero, and then you'll get minus uh, e to the negative lambda minus u, if time, evaluate it at zero, and then divide it by minus lambda minus u. So this thing evaluated at zero. So this thing evaluated at infinity is converging on zero, basically. And this thing evaluated at zero, if you evaluate the exponential at zero, that's just going to give you one. Uh, so what we're going to end up with is basically uh, the minuses are going to cancel, and we're going to get lambda from the front times lambda minus u. And that function is defined on uh, values of u less than lambda. So there's the moment generating function of of an exponential uh, distribution, basically. Uh, now, what we said is that the moment generating function of our uh, of our y, uh, what was, was it, subscript i? Uh, so the moment generating function, we didn't want the moment generating function of um, of the exponential. We wanted the moment generating function originally of, the, of this yi random variable, and that was this moment generating function of the exponential to the power of i. So basically, the moment generating function yi um, as a function of u is going to be this one, lambda over lambda minus u to the power of i. So it's going to equal lambda to the power of i over lambda minus u to the power of i, and that's defined on u is less than lambda. And you will notice that that is exactly the moment generating function for a gamma distribution. So um, the, the gamma distribution is exactly this. It's defined on u is less than gamma, and it's gamma to the power of i over gamma, uh, sorry, lambda to the power of i over lambda minus u to the power of i. The restriction here is that i, remember, i was going to be the uh, time at which the if email arrived. This random variable yi was the time at which the if email arrived. So i can only take on values uh, corresponding to integers, uh, positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it can only take on natural number values like that. So it's very restricted. This doesn't basically give you all gamma distributions. It tells you a story for a few gamma distributions. And what we see is that yi is going to be gamma distributed, and uh, the parameter a in this case, i, is taking the place of a. So if I um, if I remind you of what the gamma, if we have the random variable x, which is gamma distributed with parameter a lambda, 
then its moment generating function as a function of that same little t was going to be lambda to the power of a over lambda minus t to the power of a and that was defined on t is less than lambda so this is very similar t is obviously uh, just a variable so t is being taken the place of by u Okay, lambda has stayed exactly the same, and again, it can take on any that positive value, basically. It has to be a positive number, but uh, that's the only restriction on lambda. Lambda has to be greater than zero, and that was exactly the same restriction that we had on the gamma distribution anyway, so that's fine. Uh, and then this i is taking the place of a, basically, uh, in our, um, in our uh, gamma distribution. So i is uh, taking the place of by a. Okay, uh, so this is gamma i lambda, where what we know is that i takes on values from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., some natural number. So if you want to know how is the random variable uh, which ascribes to each outcome the number, the time at which the ith uh, email arrives distributed, it's going to be distributed gamma i lambda, where lambda, uh, lambda remember, is this rate, uh, this expected rate at which emails are going to arrive. Okay, and that's the connection, basically, between the exponential distribution and the gamma distribution.